Hey guys, welcome to another episode of NetSec Now. Uh, so today what we're going to go ahead and discuss is command execution. And it's going to be probably a quick video here because there's not a whole lot to go into great detail about uh, with this type of attack. So let's just get started. So command execution, right? What is it? What is a command execution vulnerability? Well, basically what it is is uh, a script that somebody has created to do a function and it requires user input however uh, basically it doesn't it doesn't sanitize the user input data so you can actually escape what it's requesting or what it's looking for uh, and actually execute arbitrary commands on the server so why is that a problem well of course it's a problem because uh, you you you're executing commands on a server uh, so the caveat with that is that once you execute the commands, you can only execute them as the user who owns the script or who the script is running as. Uh, so for instance, if it's running as an HTTP user in an HTTP group, you can't execute root level commands, of course. Uh, so how does it work? Again, basically it just asks for some user input and uh, then you can escape that with an escape character like the ampersand sign and actually uh, put in your own codes to run on a system so like a terminal based command of you know uh, grepping or you know catting files and stuff like that uh, so let's get started and for this we're going to be using the DVWA to follow along with the WebSec uh, series that we've been using here just go back over to here so of course I've already got it running if you're not sure how to set up DVWA uh, or get it running or even log in for that instance um, we have videos on that too so just search the channel out and uh, you'll see them they were recent too so uh, without further ado let's just log in here admin password and following down the list the last video we did was on brute forcing let's go ahead go down to command execution so basically this here is a a ping for free type of script okay uh, so it's asking you to enter in an IP address below so let's just go ahead and enter in the gateway of the network here and just hit submit to see what it does and you can see simply guys it's it's pretty straightforward it just pings uh, the IP address that you put in so that was your user input was the IP address itself it already issues the ping command for you so it's just basically sending out some ICMP packets uh, and pinging a host or an IP address. So that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at what types of commands or you know how it actually works, how the escape works. So let me just clear this out by refreshing here. 192.168.1 and let's go ahead and see what current directory directory we are working in. So the PWD command. So the and or the ampersand sign is the escape character and then anything after that is our commands that we're injecting or executing so you can see that uh, very first for some reason it uh, issued our command print the working directory so var www html dvwa vulnerabilities and exec and then of course it just went ahead with its original command and it pinged the host that we were looking for and returned no errors so going back to saying that uh, you know it was a user input validation it does not validate anything other than the IP address right so if we tried to type in uh, you know um, I don't know let's see it doesn't it doesn't do anything right because it only is looking for numerical digits so if we typed in six eight one to one and the ampersand sign there to escape and then just to go a step further, lsarl, because I want to see in that current directory what are a listing of all the files and their permissions. Let's go ahead and hit submit. And you can see now it returns uh, our command, ls, to list the directory contents um, and then the permissions on said files. So you can see here, just to go over it quickly, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but if you guys are confused here about directory permissions uh, or file permissions, I'll just uh, give you a quick overview here so anything in the first part of this these are all your permissions here to the very far left okay in that column so the very first part it's either a D or it's a negative sign like this a D specifies that it's a directory okay and you can see that all the way to the far right here it says source 
and then if it's just a regular file you can see that it's a dash uh, to, to speculate or to say that it's a regular file. The very next set of three here is read write and if there was execute permissions there would be an X there so RWX and the first set of three belong to the user that the file belongs to so that's me afterburn right um, the next set of three would give you the per the file permissions or directory permissions for the group afterburn so when you create your own you know when you create a new user on a on a Linux Unix machine it usually creates a group automatically the same name as that user uh, and then the very last set of three here are for anybody else who's not specifically either afterburn or in or part of the afterburn group okay so just going by that example here you can see that afterburn has read write and no execute permissions anybody belonging to the group afterburn has just read only permissions no write and no execute and then anybody else just has read permissions no write no execute so that's just a brief overview on file permissions all right so moving forward I mean that's pretty much it just to give you guys another idea we'll just do a another command here um, oops. and let's see mm, let's see let's see what what do we have as a good file in our home directory just as a text file to cat out uh, let's go to the cracking directory oops and we'll do passwords.txt or actually we'll just do usernames.txt it's easier and then see if this will actually go through here. It might have trimmed some data. Nope. So you can see that it catted out that file. If we went into a terminal here, I could show you the same thing. Oops. And you can see it's Bob, Mary, Joe, admin, administrator, and Jesse. So also it did the same thing here. But this time it's a little bit different because it started to ping first before the cat results actually returned. And so it returned in the middle of the command. So that's pretty much it guys. Command execution is, is pretty straightforward. It's a bad idea because obviously we can get all sorts of information from files on the system, uh, at least if we have the read permissions on them. So moving forward, uh, just to give you guys some updates and some news, uh, I, I was taking a little bit of a break for making videos because a, a very, 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 very close family member of mine passed away and uh, quite honestly I couldn't focus on making quality videos. So that being said, um, in the meantime, I was working on some of the website. Uh, I was working on creating some some content for you guys and some things that you could use. Uh, so in the meantime, if you went on our webpage and you were following along because I posted on Twitter and stuff like that, uh, you could see in the download section I went ahead and made a very unique 1.2 million, almost 1.3 million unique password list. Uh, this password list combined uh, some secret stash passwords that I've had over the years that have been very successful for me as well as most of the top common passwords uh, also as well uh, as some of the top breaches from like Ashley Madison LinkedIn um, you know uh, some of the dating websites like eHarmony and stuff like that I put those all into one huge list and then I trimmed it down by deduplicating it so you'll never find the same password twice in the list so it's unique in that nature uh, when you go to download it here guys you're just gonna click here um, it's a donation wear type of thing because I worked really really hard on this uh, I spent hours upon hours almost like a complete week on it um, so it basically takes you over to uh, PayPal now of course you can log into your PayPal or whatever um, you could put in whatever amount you want here guys really but most people just generally put five or ten bucks or something like that uh, and it'll automatically redirect you to the download the direct download for that password list and it's in a, uh, a tar file so if it doesn't redirect you because sometimes you know the redirects don't work correctly uh, just either shoot us a message here on the downloads page like other people have done or send me an email with your your uh, information and I'll go ahead and confirm the payments and then I will directly email it over to you um, 
other developments on the website uh, of course I've just been posting here and there uh, there's also a merchandise page now guys I made some pretty unique stickers here uh, let me just blow this up for you so you can see um, obviously it looks like gibberish to most people right but it's actually hexadecimal and we should all know that uh, and it translates over to the word hacker so I thought it was pretty unique something to give something back to us you know that only we or like-minded people would understand uh, as just opposed to the word hacker on some bumper sticker I mean these are pretty cool I got one on my laptop lid I've got one on each of my trucks uh, that I drive around every day uh, you can put them on helmets you can put them on pretty much anything they measure measure uh, seven by three inches and they're only four dollars and fifty cents and it helps me out a lot uh, to you know give give some money back to me for for putting time and, and stuff into this um, so that's pretty much it guys uh, make sure you keep following me on on Twitter that's cool I got over 500 followers on Twitter I really appreciate that that's the, like really the best way to contact me uh, if you need a quick uh, you know message or something like that otherwise email me uh, and you can get the email off the website uh, YouTube is blown up. I mean, it's like uh, over 21,300 subscribers. That's that's awesome, guys. Uh, again, I apologize for not making a video in the last month, but uh, you know, when the family member passed away, uh, you know, it was pretty detrimental. Um, I couldn't really focus, and of course, I like to focus on the videos and make sure that you know you're getting the best out of them. Uh, we're also launching an online school. It's been official. I put out a vote uh, in the last month and a poll and a lot of people seem to be interested in it. it's going to be like a paid version online school but the video quality is going to be much better than what's been on YouTube it's also going to be uh, you know levels where you can download the videos you could download the slides uh, you can download a PDF of it um, you know and you can learn at your own pace and of course then I'll always be there to answer questions as well uh, we might be able to get into live broadcasting where at some point I'd like to have live classes going uh, it's different from the idea behind it is different from like other places like Cybrary and you know uh, Security Tube and stuff like that. Uh, whereas we're going to do it very unique. I'm going to stay to my my style of teaching, uh, which I think a lot of people appreciate and like. Uh, at least that's the feedback I get. So again, guys, stay tuned. Thanks for all the support. I appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video. In the next video we're going to be going over. Let's see, CSRF token stealing. Uh, or cross-site request forgery, and we'll go into CR CRSF uh, tokens and stuff like that. Okay, guys, and we'll take up much more of your time. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.